Yes, yeah, so I won't be offended if you eat. Um, before I start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to Elders past, present and future. I would acknowledge uh, Minister Stokes, thank you for that address, uh, Professor Blakely and my colleagues, mayors and councillors here today. Uh, you'll see uh, the, the A3 slide come up uh, that was our inspiration for, try, for putting a submission in earlier this year to join the Future Cities Collaborative. Uh, before I speak to that slide, I thought it would be pertinent for me um, addressing a room in Sydney just to put Newcastle in context for you. So we are the capital of uh, the Hunter region. Uh, and I know that uh, term can be bandied around a lot, but we do have a university in Newcastle, a port, an airport. We have rail links to regional New South Wales and rail links to Sydney. Uh, the Hunter region's population is around 660,000 people. Uh, which is more than Tasmania's. Actually, the Lower Hunter, just the lower five councils in the Hunter region, has a similar population to Tasmania. Uh, in the Lower Hunter alone, we, are dub we produce double Tasmania's GDP. So it is not only the powerhouse and the engine room of the New South Wales economy, is also of very equivalent stats to one of our major states that's very well resourced, both through state and federal uh, funding measures. Um, outside, there's always a lot of discussion about Sydney, and uh, it, which is fine. No, Sydney's great, it's lovely, it's sometimes a bit difficult to get around. It's a beautiful city, nowhere near as beautiful and as wonderful as Newcastle, I might say. But in practical terms, um, you talk, um, as several speakers before me have spoken about the challenges of growth you have in, in Western Sydney in particular, and in Sydney alone, and those population target, targets that have been set with matching infrastructure. What I would say to you is similar uh, interest and planning needs to happen in Newcastle and the Hunter because what we, where we are situated in, in Newcastle and the CBD, which I will talk about, talk to in this slide, is uh, at the mouth of an alluvial valley. Uh, our CBD is beautifully situated, um, not for infrastructure development, but for uh, attractiveness on the edge of a working harbour on one side and the best surfing beaches in the country on the other side. And that stat has been backed up um, uh, by uh, many people in Newcastle and uh, around the city uh, and the state. And there's been books written about those beaches, but you'll have to come to Newcastle to, to see what I'm talking about. It does make it hard when you've got a CBD that's on a peninsula uh, to make sure where we have the right infrastructure and we're getting people into our CBD. What I would say is that uh, the plans that we've had for Newcastle for, have stood for many years, but in recent years there's been several decisions around uh, public transport that has caused um, great divides amongst our community. And being part of this Future Cities Collaborative was one way we saw of trying to bring um, different government agencies together as well as trying to bring the community, community together. So we saw very good examples of how this was done in, in LA and in Dallas in terms of in, uh, empowering the community to say what they wanted to say but also they had to vote um, and in LA it was a super majority. That, but what they did have and what, what we seem to lack uh, particularly in the Hunter and, and in New South Wales is integrated long-term plans that integrate transport with uh, land use plans. And I know that people have for many years worked on and off on those plans. I've been um, in local government myself since 2008. And it is probably a great frustration to maybe many people in this room, and I'm not alone, I hope, that a lot of the work we're doing, which is really good work with urban growth in the CBD of Newcastle, a lot of um, good inspiration has come and good learnings have come from being part of this Future Cities Collaborative, but we're still operating in the complete absence of, of good regional integrated long-term plans for transport and land use. And what, what I saw and what everybody saw in, in Dallas and in LA and in the other cities in the States were, as Ed said earlier, 50-year uh, plans that integrated transport planning and land use planning. And that's, that's why LA is moving towards a, a city that's more based on the New York style, where you can get around on public transport, you have more density of housing. Uh, Newcastle 
the significant learnings were a lot, as you could imagine, and I won't go through all, all of them, but that, that was one for me that stood out and has stood out again and again. It was about integrating transport planning and land use planning. And specifically, I would say again for the hunter, and transport for New South Wales is really transport for Sydney. In, in a place like Newcastle and the Hunter, we actually need our own regional transport authority. And that's what LA has done as a region, that's what Dallas has done as a region, and they've got fantastic outcomes. And we have, that council said for a long time, it's hard, Newcastle City Council, unlike Sydney City, we provide a, an art gallery, a museum, um, we, we provide basically state infrastructure as a regional capital on a rate base. So in, in terms of a city in itself, we're providing infrastructure that's often provided by the state government in Sydney, but we're all doing it in Newcastle off um, rates alone, which is, can be very, very difficult. Uh, the port of Newcastle, uh, which is a, it's a great resource for our region, a, a, will be a huge so source of, a, of an economic driver in the future, was recently sold for $1.7 billion. Now, uh, 400 million of that will go to uh, urban renewal projects in Newcastle, but the rest of that money is in consolidated revenue to go to rail, road and rail projects in Sydney. So when we're talking about value capture, that is, a bit, that is a missed opportunity for Newcastle and the Hunter to actually be the, the second city and provide, we can actually provide, we, we've got great water resources through the Hunter and with the right infrastructure and the right planning, the pressure does not have to be on Western Sydney. The Hunter Valley is really where it's at in terms of the future growth of New South Wales. We have, we have the land, um, we have the, the resources, we have the bones of the infrastructure, but what we actually need is that, that planning integrated. Now, to draw that back down into, which is essentially the CBD, so the area I'm talking about is our historic CBD. Newcastle, this, this stretch here along Hunter Street was settled just after Sydney. So it, it has a huge amount of historic buildings. What is fantastic, and what has been fantastic being part of the Future Cities Collaborative, is actually urban growth have put significant, significant state funding on the table to partner with a private developer, GPT, to do an inner city East End project. So what I've done, this is a civic precinct and along our city area there's three main precincts which is the west end where there's um, the line, the, the heavy rail line is planned to be truncated, then there's a civic precinct and there's the east end project um, precinct that uh, urban growth is working on. I've actually provided a map down there to actually show those different precincts in a more holistic sense because the, one of the interesting learnings from being part of the Future Cities Collaborative was when we... Um, first submitted earlier this year, we actually submitted a plan based around the civic precinct, which is up on the slide. But as soon as we became involved with this project, we actually expanded some of the work we're doing to include urban growth and, and the East End, which has been very, very valuable um, in terms of where we're at now. And a good example of that is on Monday, for the next six weeks, urban growth and council are working side by side on very uh, detailed community participation around these plans. And that has come about uh, by being part of the Future Cities Collaborative and also by, uh, you know, I have to give credit to the, the staff at Urban Growth and also to our council staff of actually working very closely together. And the inspiration came from the Future Cities Collaborative in that we used uh, participatory democracy that was introduced to us earlier this year through this collaborative um, and a discussion with Lynn Carson. And those principles are being used because I can't explain to you, uh, you probably already know how divided the community is and how sensitive they are about this rail infrastructure. And it's really tough as a mayor in, in local government because it's not my infrastructure, but everybody in Newcastle wants me to fix it. And um, it, it's, it is tough. So that those, the, the collaboration with the state government, I mean, it's fantastic that the minister's here and I, and I appreciate that. But um, it, it would be great to um, break the back of transport for New South Wales if you could maybe have a talk to your colleague. <laughs> um, look, the, the barriers are, are really getting people on board and, I, and that is, it's not getting people on board but it's letting them have their say and letting them be a part of that pro, They want to feel part of this city. Most people that respond to our surveys or most people that live in Newcastle or are part of our, uh, our normal processes, stats come back to me that 41% have lived in Newcastle for more than 25 years. 
So most of my friends that will move overseas or live in Sydney for a while, they have a family, they all rush back. It is, a, it, it's a great lifestyle and a great city. But we need to, we all acknowledge that the city needs population, it needs people, and we need planning that goes back to uh, the professor's point and the minister's point that at, the, at its essence improves the quality of people's lives. And that, and that is the principles we're using to work on plans with urban growth. That, that is the principles where we've used... I mean, you see the, the first part of our civic plan includes people. And if people are at the centre of our planning in council, in, in the centre of the state government's plans, you're always going to get a better outcome. I can't tell you how much um, the next couple of months is going to be interesting, so it's more of a watch this space in Newcastle as we genuinely go out um, based on the learnings here to get uh, community consultation and get feedback about our city centre. I know that I apologise, Harriet, that I have gone over seven minutes, but I did warn Sandy that I probably would. <laughs> I, thank, uh, I do thank the team uh, from the Future Cities Collaborative. They have been amazing in terms of resources and making sure that um, we got almost every minute out of 24 hours into learning while we're away. So it has been a fantastic and I, and I hope an ongoing uh, collaboration. So thank you.